Well, good morning, good morning. Great to see you today on this beautiful Lord's Day. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Let's stand together as we begin on Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, This morning, shake some hands, hug some necks, give some fist bumps, tell somebody it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. Sing this with me. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirits will sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet in the sweet I am mine we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for this beautiful morning, this amazing time of worship. God, we just pray that we turn our hearts and our minds to you as we sing, as we hear Pastor Danny preach in just a few moments. God, we are just so thankful for the time that we have here at First Baptist. We pray that we look to you in all things and we love you and we praise you. It's in your holy and precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I do want to welcome you to First Baptist this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, For those online, I often forget about you guys, so, so sorry, but we are so thankful for you guys joining us as well. Um, If you are a guest with us this morning, there is a guest card in the pew pocket in front of you. Go ahead and grab that and fill that out. We would love to get details for you, prayer requests on the back. You can also do this online at First Baptist Corsicana, uh, First Baptist uh, FBCCana.org, excuse me. Um, And then also, hey, let's pick out the second service. 
service. Y'all come back, get a double dose this morning. We're going to be recognizing our seniors this morning. It's going to be an awesome time of honor and recognition for all that they have accomplished um, this morning in the 11 o'clock service. Thank you guys so much for being here. And because of that sacrifice as the Lamb of God, we have victory in Jesus. Let's stand together and sing. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me precious blood's atoning, then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me Yeah. 
from the dawn's of setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and the work on earth is done, and the roll is called and yonder I'll be. All right, let me hear you sing it out. When We praise your great name today. Father, we give you glory today. And because of the sweet Lamb of God, we have victory that we can proclaim that when the roll is called up yonder, that we as your children, we will be there. Father, thank you for gathering us together today, your people in your house. Father, our prayers that our worship has been pleasing to your ears. Father, thank you for being in this place. We feel your presence today. Father, we ask that you would be with our pastor as he comes to preach the word that you've laid on his heart today. Father, speak to hearts, speak to minds today. Open our ears that we may be receptive to your word today. We thank you, we love you, we praise you in your son's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, It is a beautiful, beautiful weekend. I think summer has arrived a bit early. Uh, But we are celebrating beautiful weather. Before I start today, I want to tell you one of the reasons I'm so excited. It's because what happened yesterday, many of our church were not there, but we had a Sunday school class that gathered for a special baptism. And as you can see, we are not in the baptistry. We are in Richland Chambers Lake, and um, that is Doak and Patricia Hodgson. And uh, we were at their place baptizing Doak and and then following baptizing Patricia And I'm just so thankful for the chance to be with them and um, to celebrate them as new believers. Many in that Sunday school class are here today. They were out there yesterday. We had a great time, amen? We had a wonderful, wonderful time. So let's give God a hand for that great baptism in our church. Praise God for that. Well, today it is a joy to be able to bring God's Word. Every Sunday I feel that way. I feel that way today. It's an exciting day. It is Senior Sunday, and this crowd sometimes, I better clarify, we're talking about high school seniors, and we're talking about graduates. And um, so in our second service today, as Tim already shared with you, we'll be going in that direction. But I'm going to be preaching a message to them, the same one I'm going to preach to you today, titled Pressing On With God. And I want to start off by introducing you to a name. It's not a household name in American sports, but I believe it's a name that you'll remember after this story. His name was Fred Merkel. 
Uh, Merkel is, a, is, is not a household name, as I said. However, he is remembered for something very interesting because he's not remembered for something that he did. He's remembered for something that he did not do. You see, Fred Merkel failed to press on. Let me tell you the story. On September the 23rd in 1908, the New York Giants, a baseball team, was playing against the Chicago Cubs in a hotly contested game. It was the bottom of the ninth inning. The score was tied one to one. There were two outs. Nobody was on base. And that's when our man, Fred Merkel, comes to the plate. And Fred Merkel delivered a single to right field. Well, the next man up also got a single to right, and Fred Merkel motors around to third base. Now, two outs, the game-winning run is only 90 feet away on third base. Now, the next batter up hits a line drive to center field. It falls in front of the center fielder. It should have scored Merkel easily from third base, but all of a sudden, in the stadium that day, pandemonium broke out. The fans started rushing onto the field as Fred Merkel was trying to run from third to home. They began to stop him and shake his hand and pat him on the back, and he never made it to home plate. Now, the mob was so excited, they pushed him because they were all around, and they pushed him over towards the dugout, and the Chicago manager, my Cubs, right, ran onto the field and notified the umpire that he never crossed home plate. Somebody produced a ball. They tagged Fred Merkel for the third out. There was great confusion. The Giants thought that they had won the game two to one. The Cubs thought they had won the game by forfeit. And finally, the president of the league comes out and makes a declaration. He says, if at the end of the season, the records are tied, there will be a tie-breaking game. And folks, guess what? That's exactly what happened, and and the picture you see on the screens today is a photo from that 1908 game. Both ended the season with 98 and 55 records. The game was played, the Chicago Cubs won the game, and Fred Merkel spent the next 14 years of his career being known as the man who what? Failed to make it to home plate. He was the man who lost the pennant because... He failed to go forward. Now that's what I'm going to talk to our graduates about today. I'm going to talk to them about the fact that they must press forward from here. And I'm going to tell them that just because they graduated from high school, it's not their last day. And I'm going to tell them if they go all the way back to their old pastor's history, right, as Ryan always tells me how old I am, If we go all the way back to when I graduated high school in 1990, I recognize now that was not my last day. It was a big day, but it wasn't my last day, right? And now I've realized 32 years later, that's hard to believe, that it was a launching point to many great days of following Jesus Christ. Now, you're not high school graduates, and yet this message, I think, has a lot to say to you. Because I want to talk to you today about pressing forward in following Jesus Christ. You see, when I think of the Fred Merkel story, I think of the fact that there have been many occasions all throughout biblical history when God's people started, but they failed to finish. They started, but they failed to press on. And that made a difference for multiple generations. And the most famous of all of those instances, I believe, is found in the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 13. I want you to go ahead and grab your Bible and start turning there to Numbers, chapter 13, because this chapter or this passage is the most famous committee report of all time. Now, we're Baptists here today, right? And what do we love more than anything except for a potluck lunch? We love committees, don't we? don't we? We even have a committee on committees. That's how much we love committees. And so in Numbers 13, we have the most famous committee report of all time. Let me set the stage. After the mighty power of God had sent the plagues upon Egypt, after God had parted the Red Sea and allowed his people to go through on dry ground, After he had fed the people manna from heaven in the desert, they come to the southern boundary of what they were going to call the promised land. 
And God wanted them to press forward, didn't he? He wanted them to move forward. He wanted them to take the promised land. But they decided to send a, say it together, a committee to explore and analyze and investigate. And in Numbers 13, verse 26, we hear the report of the committee. Let's stand together as we honor the reading of God's word today. Numbers chapter 13, beginning in verse 26. The committee report, in my Bible it says report on the exploration. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. And there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land in which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. And they hold up grapes. But the people who live there, mark that, but the people who live there are powerful. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses And he said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are great, are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Today we're going to unpack this committee report. And we're going to talk about some things that we can derive from it. And I believe God's going to teach us how to be a people who can press forward for him. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, we know this. We know that it was God's intention that his people have this land. But rather than march forward confidently into it, they chose to just examine it, right? And they saw amazing luscious fruit. They saw that it was a land of abundant productivity. One would have expected them in unison to come together and say, hey, let's go get it. But I want you to notice in verse 28, the lead word that stopped them. It's a three-letter word that can change everything. It's the word, but. But. Now, depending on how you use it, it can be the worst three-letter word in your walk with God. I can't even recall the number of times that I've heard it. You're exactly right, Pastor Danny, but I know that's what the Word of God says, but I know I should be more mature in my walk with Christ, but You see, that little three-letter word can become a great hindrance to a person striving to follow Jesus Christ. It can stop you and I in our tracks. It can destroy a confident walk with God. That committee went out and they came back and they said, yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's luscious, but it cannot be done. And with that word, they bring us to the first truth of today. Here it is. Did you realize the eyes always see what they bring with them. The eyes always see what they bring with them. And here's what I mean by that. If our eye brings with it fear, it's going to see fear. If our eye brings with it difficulty, it's going to see difficulty. If the eye brings with it reasons why we can't do something, then we're probably going to just stop in our tracks and not do one single thing. Many of you know I love World War II history. And we're going to talk about our veterans in a way to honor them, all of our veterans, in just a little bit. But I want to take you back to General George Patton. 
I love this story because it really makes the point that we're trying to discuss today. In July of 1944, Patton was obsessed with fear that he wasn't going to be able to get his army into World War II before it was all over. He wanted to fight. He wanted to go and protect America and freedom. So he visited some of his troops in France and he asked them, what in the world are you doing? And they said, we're studying the maps, General. Why haven't you crossed the river sand and pressed on, he said. Well, that's why we're studying the maps, they said. We're trying to find a place to cross the river. And Patton raised his voice in classic Patton style, and he said, I just walked across it. It's two feet deep. He said, get up in the name of common sense, and instead of looking at the maps, get out and look at the river. And so they got up, and they went across. You see, there are some times, right, that churches, there are sometimes families, godly families, there are sometimes individual Christians, we just sit and look at the maps. And when we look at the maps, we, we say, well, it's, it's too difficult. I can't do that. We can't do that. And our problem is this, that we measure ourselves against our difficulties and our unknown future rather than measuring our difficulties against an omnipotent God. You see, it's a totally different way of looking. So I want to ask you today, as you look into your own future, do you trust God? As you look into your situation in life, do you think that this thing can be overcome? And, and yeah, I know this. The water is deep. We all have things ahead of us that will be treacherous, treacherous and, and hard. But God has led me, I think, to tell you today that, yes, the water is deep, but it's not as deep as you think it is. And God's word for you today is, hey, press on and go through it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The person who enjoys the very best of God's plan is the person who says, regardless of this challenge, I'm going to press on with God. So we have to press on. You as a follower of Jesus, you must press on. You must press on as a Christian in your witness and your outreach to unbelievers. If we don't do that, who's going to do that? We have to press on as a church to lead the next generation to love and serve Christ. I gave you some staggering statistics last Sunday on Mother's Day. We have to pour ourselves right now. It's not somebody else's job. It's our job to get into that student ministry and that children's ministry and do our part with them. We must press on in giving to missions. We must press on in worshiping. We must press on in using our talents and service to God. We must press on. Somebody say amen. But I want you to notice in verse 30 that Caleb was the one, right? He was the one who saw it from God's perspective. And out of the twelve, there were only two who saw it like God saw it. And that leads me to the second truth that I want to make today. And we need to hear this this morning. The majority is not always right. I'm going to say that again. The majority is not always right. What everybody else says and thinks and does is not automatically the will of God. You see, it's always possible that there are those people who, despite the promises of God and despite the movement of God and the power of God all around us, that they will choose this approach. There'll always be people who say, you know what, we can't do that. It just can't be done. So now we're going to spring forward to Joshua 14. Start turning, start turning there with me. In Joshua 14, it's very interesting. Now, this is 45 years later. And this is Caleb's recollection. Caleb recalls that neither he nor Joshua ever doubted. They were the voices of dissent. And he claims in the passage we're about to read that 45 years ago, they stood alone. They trusted God. They publicly announced their confident opinion. But the majority chose not to believe. And because of that, they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. And so now in the passage we're about to read, Caleb and Joshua, guess what? They are the oldest people in the camp. And they're surrounded by all these younger men and families. 
And they continue to fight to conquer this land of Canaan. So, so now let's hear Caleb's words. I love this. And this is where this particular message touches many of us as we, as we age in life. Listen to what Caleb says, Joshua 14, verse 7. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while, while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today. I love this. Caleb, here I am today, 85 years old. And I am still strong, he says. I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised to me that day. You yourselves heard that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. If you're 85 years old today, raise your hand right quick. Don't you want to be a Caleb? I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. I love that. Folks, Caleb is still standing. Caleb is still fighting. Caleb is still believing. He, he was a man who peered into his future and his eyes sparkled with enthusiasm. They sparkled with optimism, sparkled with hope and faith. And he did not care if he stood alone then and he doesn't care if he stands alone now. He didn't cower to the crowd. He didn't say everyone owed him something because he was old. No. He said, you see that range of mountains? You see that? You see that hill? Give me that to conquer. You see those giants? He said, bring them on, right? And all of that affirms this point. That too many times the crowd is the problem. Too many times faith, lack of faith, is the problem. Let me say this. Age is not going to be the problem. Faith is going to be the problem. And that's what we see in Caleb. It's not our age. It's not the crowd. It's not the difficulty. It's the lack of faith. So that brings me to the close of the message. And here's what I want to do. I want to make two requests and then tell you one story and then I'll be done. The first request. I want to ask all of us, no matter our age, and we've got all different ages in this room. Whatever your age, I ask you to view life not as a threat, but as a challenge. You see, you can't predict your future. We've never been able to. But we can choose to adopt Caleb's mentality and refuse to hibernate, refuse to retire, refuse to retreat, refuse to worry, refuse to curl up, refuse to fold up, refuse to dry up. No, grab this day, whatever day it is, grab this year, whatever year it is, th grab this season in your life and accept it as the challenge that it is and recognize that you're not alone. God's with you. Refuse, right, to hibernate and retire. Second, second request. I ask you to choose to follow the Lord fully and not half-heartedly. Brother Steve and I were talking this week about a song years ago that they, we used to sing in the youth group, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a casual Christian, right? I don't want to live, I don't want to live a lukewarm life, it said. And that's my request today. Don't be a casual Christian. Don't choose to follow God half-heartedly. No, follow him with your full heart and do it like Caleb did for your entire life, right? Follow him with your whole heart for your whole life. And if you do that, you're going to reap the harvest that Caleb reaped. I want to be like Caleb, don't you? I like that guy. Two requests, now a story. 
They say it was one of the greatest moments in the history of ABC's wide world of sports. Did you ever watch this on Saturdays? <laughs> Remember the logo? When I pulled that up this week, I thought, oh, I loved it when that appeared on the TV because I knew something good was on the way. This particular moment was the Hawaiian Ironman competition. And hundreds of people had been on this 140-mile course. They were swimming and cycling and running a marathon. And, and Julie Moss is the one we're going to talk about. She was in that race. At that time, Julie was 23 years old. She was leading the women's division when in sight of the finish line, her legs buckled with cramps and she collapsed onto the pavement. She stood up. She pushed herself forward. She fell a second time. She got up and pushed herself forward and she fell a third time. Folks, within a car length's distance of the finish line, she collapsed a fourth time. And she laid there as she watched the woman who was in second place pass her and finish in first. And then that TV camera zoomed in as she was clawing with her fingernails along the pavement and she gra dragged herself with her arms across the finish line, hand over hand, and the whole world admired her intensity and her courage and her obsession and her drive. The reason was because she would not stop. She pressed on. Now when I think about that, I think about you. Your race isn't over, is it? Your race isn't done. So what's God calling you to next in his service? I think about you. I also think about this incredible Baptist church that's been here for all of these decades. He's led FBC to a certain point right here, right now. But here's the question. What's he calling us to next? See? And I just think about God's people in general. You see, it's time for us, regardless of the challenge and regardless of the difficulty, to press on to reach the next prize that God has laid before us. Today, I want to challenge us. Let's not be like Fred Merkel, right? Let's not be remembered for something that we did not do. Let's, but let's be remembered for something that we did do by faith for God. May God bless this church. May God bless our tomorrow, and may we vigorously right, rise up to follow him into our future. Praise be to God. Let's bow our heads together. God, thank you so much for this really intense story. Thank you for Caleb and Joshua who recognize the fact that if you go with them, that nothing is impossible. Lord, thank you that Caleb, these 45 years later, an 85-year-old, he was still tenacious in desiring what you asked him to do. He was still spiritually vigorous. Lord, he wasn't going to back down from the enemy. Lord, he still had dreams and goals for, for God's people. God, and I pray today for, for all of us that we would have that mentality. Lord, we don't have to be 85. We don't have to be 90 or 75. Lord, any age, we can have that mentality. God, so bring the synergy of those mentalities together and allow us to be a team, Lord, a unit, a church, a ministry, a body, a family that just doesn't quit relentlessly pursuing what you want for us. And God, help us to attack our future. Help us to not go timidly. Help us to not cower in fear. It's something that just seems to be a little bit hard. God, thank you for this story. Thank you that it is a call to press forward. God, do that in the youngest among us today. Do that in the oldest. God, help us to have Caleb's spirit to press forward with you and for you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If God spoke to you this morning, would you say amen?
Amen. Amen. Stand with me this morning. As you stand, I want to ask you to respond to what the Lord has said to you. I do believe that he, He's spoken. I do believe that He'll speak again. But I do believe He spoke to you. Maybe there's something in your future and you say, Pastor, I've been dreading that. I've been scared of that. But I'm giving it to God today and I'm going to press forward into it in Him. If you'd like to come and pray with me about that, boy, I'd be honored to pray with you. If you want to come and get to this altar and pray over that with, with one of your brothers and sisters beside you, come and pray for that. Come and pray for our church in this area. Come and pray for these graduates-to-be. Pray that God would use them mightily as they go out into the world with, with Him to shine His light. If you're here and you don't know Christ and you want to give your life to the Lord, we invite you today to give Him your life by faith. I'm so thankful for Doak and Patricia. If you are ready to be baptized as a believer, you come and announce that. Come to me today and announce that. We'll share that with the church. If you're ready to recommit your life to the Lord, to join this church today, you come and make those decisions. This altar is open. This invitation is for you. As we begin to sing, you be the first one to come today. Let's sing together. Come every soul by sin. There's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him, only trust Him.
to God be the glory. Thank you to each of you that came and prayed today. Be seated, and let's turn our attention to our screens for this week's announcements. Good morning, everyone. I want to say congratulations to our seniors. This is an exciting time, and so we are so proud of you. You've put in a lot of hard work to get to this point. And parents, I know you've put in a lot of hard work, too, to get the kids to this point. So congratulations to all of you. We're proud of you um, and all the work you've done. And we're excited for all the fun things that are going to be coming up soon for you in the future. Uh, we want to remind everyone that tonight we have church conference at 6 p.m. So be sure to come out for that and come see what's going on. Um, next week, May 22nd, we will be having the Deacon's Luncheon Honoring Widows um, that will be at the Kinslow House. So if you want more information on that, please contact the church. And we're coming up to the end of our spring Wednesday night schedules that will end on May 18th. So be on the lookout for our summer schedules that's going to be coming out this next week. And speaking of summer schedules, remember, kids and youth, we have some exciting things happening this summer. So if you're interested in being a part of youth camps with Tim or all the summer stuff he has planned for you, please contact him. And kids, do not forget that we have frog camp and preteen camp coming up um, in June. And so the deadline to register for those is May 29th. So you want to get your spot in and lock it in because space is limited in those. And continue to be on the lookout, everybody, for VBS. That'll be in July this year, but we'll start the registrations pretty soon for that. So we're excited about that, and we're excited that you're here today, and so we'll see you soon. All right, very good, Kathy. I've got one additional announcement that I want to make today. When you came in, um, if you came in this way on the landing, you noticed that we are um, following up with an email that went out to the entire church. This coming Saturday, um, there is going to be a beautiful Texas Veterans Day parade um, in our community. It's on Armed Forces Day. And um, we are trying to make the decision whether we're going to have a church float in that parade, and we want all of our veterans to ride that float. Now, the email asked, are you interested in helping decorate the float? We've, all, we've had a handful of people say they'd be willing to do that. If you'd like to join with them, we need you to sign the paper out there to let us know that you're willing to help. And then second, if you're a veteran, we need you to go ahead and sign up for you and your spouse potentially to ride on that float next Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Things are happening really fast. Based on sign up this morning, we're going to have a special, very, very super quick called meeting in the parlor right here beside the sanctuary after the second service right about noon. And if you can help decorate that float, we need you to be there. We're going to talk for about three minutes because then I've got to get to the senior lunch and to follow. So please, if you can help decorate that float and join with us, provide the trailer, whatever the case may be, come to that quick meeting at noon, sign the papers, let us know, and then we'll make a judgment call whether we have enough people to make this work. All right. I hope that makes sense. So sign the paper and be a part. Let's stand together. And also, in addition to what's going on Saturday with the parade, Friday night there is an event at the palace, and they're going to have the youngest recipient of the Medal of Honor, where last year we had Woody Williams, who is the oldest recipient that's still living. And so our choir has once again been invited to come and sing. And so we need a few more folks to join us. We've got graduation going on Friday night, several other things. So we're singing two songs. We're singing the national anthem and we're singing My Country Tis of Thee. So we need some folks to join us. So if you could meet us downtown at the palace or we'll be taking a bus here, leaving about 6.05, 6.10 to shuttle us down there. Uh, if you can join us, we'd love to have you come sit in the balcony. Uh, you get in free, and it's a great program, and uh, sing with our choir, uh, the national anthem, and My Country Tis the. Everybody knows those two songs. So come join us. Be a part of that on this Friday night. Let's stand together as we're dismissed in the sweet by and by. In the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore God bless you. Have a great day.
curtain crew. I need my curtain crew, please. 